The Ukrainian writer Tanya Malyachuk's novel Forgottenness broods upon what I'd call zombie history. There are other terms for inherited memory of catastrophic events experienced by one's forebears, such as intergenerational transmission of trauma and post-memory, but the past in this novel rises from the grave and takes possession of the bodies of the living. Memories resurface as tics, gestures, obsessions, the condensations of meaning that Freud called neurotic symptoms. Sometimes these show up in the personally traumatized. Much of the literature about intergenerational trauma focuses on the reappearance of symptoms in the next generation, though they may indeed commonly do persist into the third and beyond. Here they seem dormant in the children and resurface in a grandchild. Make background music, transmuting raw experience into symbols and symbols back into raw emotions is a basic operation of psychic processing. We do it in our dreams. Literature does it for us, as does, of course, religion. Wafers and wine conjure up the real presence of Christ. Ritual is how we reconnect with the miraculous. It's no coincidence that Sonia spent her working life cleaning a music school that had once been a Catholic monastery, lugging around a mop with a giant handle that looked more like a cross awaiting a crucifixion. After crucifixions come resurrections and the narrator is getting ready to perform one. She scrubs the floor once, then twice, day in and day out, refusing to leave her apartment until Sonia's long-repressed terror finally re-emerges and takes hold of her. A fear stronger than I had ever felt gripped and paralyzed me, and my mop fell to the floor with a clunk, the narrator says. Resurrection is the great theme of forgottenness. Malyarchuk never uses the word, but reading between the lines we understand that the exhuming of memory is meant to be a miracle. So much militates against it. History for one, which she compares to the soot that coats an old painting. To restore color and detail, life, to the canvas, there must be a scrubbing, an undoing, or you might say a mopping and a nervous breakdown. A mightier enemy of memory is time itself. Time consumes everything living by the ton like a gigantic blue whale consumes microscopic plankton, milling and chewing it into a homogeneous mass so that one life disappears without a trace, giving another the next life a chance, the narrator says. It wasn't the disappearance that grieved me the most, but the tracelessness of it. That whale, monstrous and deadly, swims through the novel like a biblical leviathan. We and all that we are made up of. Billions of minuscule, almost invisible worlds, the narrator says, begin disappearing into its maw from the moment we're born. Meanwhile, the whale endures in its own whale space, absolute and immutable, where the need to think about something or remember anything doesn't exist.